Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and today we're going to work on loading our character data from our player prefs and instantiating a new character. So with that said, let's just jump right in. Alright, so we've opened up Mono Development in Unity and the first thing I'm going to do is create a new scene. So File, New Scene, I'll save it. I want to save it in my scenes folder and I'm just going to call it level one. And make sure you're on level one. Up here I'll say level one dot unity. And then I'm going to create a new prefab. Actually we already have our player character prefab so I don't have to create that. So I'll create a new script. So I'm going to come down to scripts. Create new C sharp script and I'm going to call this game master double click it to open up mono development and I'll rename it and then head back into unity I'm going to create a new empty game object I'm just going to call this Game Master, but I'm going to put two empty spaces before it so it's always at the top of the list. And I'm going to attach the script we just created to it. And there you go, it should show up. So I'll go back to Mono Development. Now I'm going to create a public variable to hold the prefab that we're going to be using for our character. So public game object. And I'm just going to call it player character. I'll save that off. Head back into Unity. We'll notice that we have the variable exposed here. I'll take my player character prefab and just drag it on. Save that in Unity. We'll head back into Mono Development. And in the start method, I'm just going to call the instantiate command to put our character in the game world now instantiate takes three variables the first one is the object you want to instantiate that's going to be our player character the position you want them to be at I'm going to put them in the center of the world for now so that's vector 3.0 and the way you want him facing. I'm just going to use Quaternion Identity so he's just facing straight ahead. We'll save that off. Let's start it up and it should add a player character for us. There we go. GamerDad81 has donated an animated human model for us for this tutorial series. Now keep in mind this is for this tutorial series. You know it's not made for commercial use or any type of profiting off of it. Uh, if you do want to use it in a commercial game or something like that, make sure you get a hold of him. Again, his username is GamerDad81 on YouTube or just GamerDad on BergsergArcade.com. So the model was made in Blender. And all I've done is just simply taken it and dragged it and dropped it into our project window and that'll do everything you really need. It'll import it, convert it, everything else. Later on we'll learn how to convert it to an FBX so we don't get things like uh, the lamp. We don't really need that. But I'll start putting together an assets folder for this tutorial series and I'll put it up on the website under its tutorial heading. I'll put a link to it in the doobly-doo below. But for now let's add this animated character model that we have right here and let's add it to our player prefab. So we'll delete the model and just add it to the scene. We're going to create a new instance of our player character prefab. And I'm just going to drag this onto it. It says we're going to lose the prefab. That's fine. And there we go. Let's make sure it's all zeroed out. Now take your player character prefab. 
You can close it if you wish and just take it and drag it back onto the prefab in your project window. That'll reassign a new prefab to it, which is just our updated player character prefab that has our human model. So we'll delete the old one. Hit play. And there we go. Now we have a model. Now we can't really see anything too well. Uh, I'm going to add a dynamic light. So we'll just create other or directional light. I'm just going to move it to a thousand by a thousand. I just like to have it out of the way. And I'm going to take it and let's see, this is the Z, so I'll adjust it. I'll have it angle down a bit more. There we go, he's a little bit. So let's go back to our script and we want to add a public variable to add our main camera to it. So we'll come up here, public camera. I'm just going to call it main camera. And if we go back to our game master object, we'll see the variables exposed. We'll just drag and drop that on there. Now we could have also just instantiated a camera if we wanted, but we already have one. Let's just use it. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because after I'm done instantiating this character, I want to actually move the camera to follow him around a bit. So we really should start caching where this player is. So I'm going to make a private variable here. It'll be a game object. And I'm just going to call him PC. Now I'm going to come down here and just say PC equals then what we instantiate. Because remember instantiate actually returns a game object. And we're going to say as game object over here. What this does is make sh it makes sure that what it does return is going to be of type game object so we can save it in PC. So if we save that off there should be no errors but we do have one. Uh, PC does not exist. I forgot my underscore. And the error should go away. It's just telling us that we're not using PC. That's okay. It should still run. Now for starting, let's have it move the camera just directly behind it a little above. So we'll say, actually we shouldn't control the camera in here. We should actually make a script that controls the camera. Uh, we'll do that in a little bit actually. That'll be another tutorial. For now, let's just move the camera behind it and have them look at it. We'll have the camera look at the player. So we're just going to say main camera dot transform dot position is going to be equal to the PC's position. Now this is going to put it directly on top of the player. we're not going to see anything. But if you looked at the camera, uh, let me turn off the full screen. Uh, if I just separate the windows. Okay, so if we go to the player and look at him, there he is. But you notice his main camera is right at the exact same spot the player is. So we just want to move it back. Oh, say right about here. So it looks like we're going to want to move it back 2.5 or up 2.5 and move it back. I guess we'll do 2.5 as well. Then of course we're going to want to angle it, which is probably about 30 degrees, 45 maybe. Or, or 22. <laughs> How about 22.5? Great. I'm just going to quickly write these down. So 2.5, negative 2.5, and 22.5.
So that's where we want to move to in in our little script we're creating. And like I said, later on, we'll actually create a new script that actually attaches to the camera. So the camera will just follow the player around automatically on its own and we don't have to worry about controlling it with this script.